Okay, so... Hello. This is probably the first time you see my face if you read my blog. It's me. Um, I thought I'd try a bit of a different thing. Written word is mostly where I have expressed myself in the past, so now I've tried to spruce that up a little. Also, maybe I'm too lazy to type. Um, today I want to tell you about uh, some games I have enjoyed recently. So, um, one thing I've really been into <laughs> addictively um, is Hearthstone. Yes, Blizzard still knows how to make addictive games. Um, what I like about Hearthstone is that it's um, it really keeps you in the nice flow zone where you get that sense of achievement but at the same time when when you get beaten down when, when you're defeated by an opponent um, you you don't feel so bad about it but you just really want to get up and try again and really really um, give it to them this time <sighs> So, um, for those of you who haven't seen the game, Hearthstone is a card-based game, kind of like Magic. I've never played Magic, but uh, that's what I think it looks like. So you have um, heroes and spells with different uh, specifications, which you can just um, put into battle against each other. You um, get ranked accordingly. You can just play for fun. And, um, of course, you have um, gold that you can earn. In, in that way it's uh, kind of like World of Warcraft, it's free to play, but um, at a certain point earning earning that money really becomes a task, so you have to um, get different achievements done every day. And um, yeah, that's why I find myself uh, sitting in bed, playing the games, um, until midnight when uh, the point um, comes when new achievements arrive. Um, yeah, so if, if you have lots of free time and you can spare some time gaming and you're an addictive personality, so maybe that's the thing for you. If you don't have time and you're an addictive person, <laughs> you definitely shouldn't get into that. Um, but uh, if, you, if you can kind of control yourself, control your gaming, urges um, then it's probably a really nice in between game for you rounds are very short um, they're they can last from around 5 to 15 minutes if it's a really epic, epic battle so um, yeah maybe give that a try it's free to play but um, not pay to win that's what I like about it you just have to invest some time though so again with the um, with the addiction problem there um, I'm sure the gaming world uh, has been heavily into XCOM 2 since its release uh, not so long ago. Um, I must say I never, I never played any of the XCOM series, and um, a friend recommended that I that I should. Um, that XCOM 2 is really fun, and uh, yeah, I th I thought I might play it but then I saw the price um, it's still like around 50 euro on Steam so I thought hmm that's a bit much right now so um, why not why not look into one of the earlier um, installments and, and check it out and, and see if it's something for me and um, XCOM Enemy Unknown was on sale so like maybe 5 euros or something so I bought that and gave it a spin and um, found that I really enjoyed it I mean I, I play on easy settings, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a noob there. And um, it really has a steep learning curve. You have to you have to pay attention to a lot of details. Um, for those of you that don't know, XCOM is a um, yeah strategy uh, turn-based strategy game where you have to kind of um, level up some soldiers and um, you're, you're the general, you're overseeing a base where you have to train soldiers and you have to um, level them up, um, build them appropriate armor and weapons so that, that they can defeat their alien enemies. Um, really cheap plot, but good strategy feeling. I mean, it's really difficult, it always keeps you on the edge. Um, you, you, you cannot allow yourself to um, not immediately research something important or build uh, the next level armor thing 
so you get completely destroyed by the aliens. Um, um, the more I enjoyed it, the more I got into it, and uh, when I was like uh, one third through the game, I I, um, I didn't get that you had to um, keep your soldiers alive. In the beginning I was kind of, meh, human life is expendable, whatever, so three guys died on this mission, I'm just gonna hire new people, it's like 10 bucks or something, so what the heck. Um, that really doesn't work with XCOM, so you need to, you need your people at the highest level possible, so uh, they get really superb skills when, when they when they do reach the final level, which is Colonel. So at, the, at one point um, you have really awesome snipers. Um, when they get to the last level they have this um, this upgrade that is called in the zone so um, you can uh, take a shot and um, if you if you hit an unflanked enemy so one enemy that doesn't uh, stand in cover directly or something um, you get to take another shot and um, if you're really lucky you can take out up to 10 enemies in one turn which is a really superior skill um, but you don't get to that point when you let two people die, as I have. So I completely restarted the game because I'm a, such a perfectionist. And uh, yeah, so that took me a while. I think um, Steam has this really uh, uncomfortable um, thing where it tells you how many hours you have spent on a game. <coughs> um, uh, yeah, you really don't want to know that sometimes. Um, a lot, a lot of hours have gone into XCOM. Um, I never thought I'd like it, but yeah, I'm now in the final mission and I can already tell that I will probably enjoy XCOM 2 at one point, maybe when the price has gone down a bit and it's on sale or something. So yeah, check that out. Okay, uh, the next game that I want to tell you about is um, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. Um, I have played some of the um, Frogware Sherlock Holmes adventures and um, not all of them are as refined as this one is. Um, I bought the whole pack when it was on sale because I'm really into the whole Sherlock uh, verse right now. And I thought, hey, wh what about these? Just check them out. And um, some of the earlier ones are... Um, not quite up to date in the graphics department, um, but uh, this one is like the latest um, in the series. There's another one uh, planned for release um, in uh, May this year, 2016. Um, it's called The Devil's Daughter. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, trailer is a bit non-specific, but um, I don't know. I just love the whole setting. I love the puzzles. I love um, the mind palace, I think that's that's one thing they actually did um, add after uh, BBC Sherlock. Um, you, you have this um, mode that you can enter where you can uh, look at your clues um, that you found on crime scenes or while interrogating suspects and uh, you can connect them and um, they're, they're uh, displayed like um, synapses. So um, each time you connect two clues to each other, it makes this really satisfying <laughs> sound. Um, yeah, you just feel really intelligent and uh, I love it. <laughs> I, I love the whole game. I love Victorian London. The setting is awesome. Um, it's a bit closer to the classical um, Sherlock Holmes series uh, as uh, in Arthur Conan Doyle's perspective. Um, but none of the cases are identical. So they have come up with completely new cases. Those are really cool ones. Like there's, um, yeah, lots of um, things with a lot of drama and, and a lot of flair. Um, Sherlock and um, uh, John, um, respectively, Holmes and Watson have good voice actors, which is critical um, for enjoying this. Um, so, yeah, if, if you're feeling up to some murder solving, um, just give it a shot. Um, I think the one uh, game in the series before Crimes and Punishments, I, I don't know what it's called, um, I'll, I'll add it in the subtitles, but um, that one 
also really got me started. There's this cool case with the ice knife. Um, yeah, so if that's your thing, have fun. <laughs> Another game that I uh, really enjoyed playing um, was Life is Strange. Um, it's an adventure about, yeah, you're you're a 19, I think she's 19 year old, um, teenage girl, um, sort of high school drama, definitely in the serious storytelling department. Um, it, it's an episodic um, adventure. Um, I binge played it though because um, I waited for it to get cheaper on Steam. So um, I'm not that good with the episode gaming thing. I just get to... I, I don't know, I just forget what happened on the episode previously. As I said, you're playing Maxine Caulfield um, and uh, you're navigating this world where you suddenly discover that you can rewind time um, and uh, you change your life and the fate of your friends accordingly. And um, one of the lessons that uh, are definitely um, in there is don't don't mess with time travel. It's always a bitch. It's always the butterfly effect, um, which is kind of worked in there symbolically. Really, um, I, I really enjoyed the symbolism. Um, at some point, there's a deer um, that's sort of a spirit animal, and um, at a very um, I try not to spoil this for you, but at a very specific moment, there's a butterfly, and you kind of you kind of um, see this handwriting all over the game. It's really fun to to uncover all these uh, little little things worked in there. Uh, you're playing a teenage girl, which is something of an unusual um, first person perspective for adventure games. I mean, there's rarely um, a female protagonist in there. Well, yeah, you can still say that. There are some, but it's it's mainly um, something that has to be mentioned. Um, and uh, also, you are very vulnerable. I mean, you some, some adventures make you feel enabled and like a puzzle solver and something. This, this adventure kind of makes you feel Again, with the symbolism, vulnerable, like like sort of this teenage innocence that that some of the girls um, portrayed in that game have, and uh, it's also full of teenage angst. So um, at one point you enter a photo contest, um, or you you are uh, you're told you should you should enter. Your work is great. I'd really like to see what comes out there, and. Uh, Max doesn't enter, um, but she 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 destroys the picture because she thinks she's not good enough. And um, I mean, all this amount of teenage angst and um, lack of self self confidence that's really something um, everyone who has gone through their teen years can relate to. It's just such a weird feeling to to be um, in those shoes again. You're you're thinking. I'm an adult. I'm. I've been through that. Um, really not okay with with someone doing that right in front of me and not not being able to tell that person that that she's wrong. That she's definitely worth. Um, I don't know. At least trying. <laughs> That's um, really does something to the player. I think the emotional involvement is quite um, deep in this one. So um, without without spoiling. Um, the game, um, it's not for the feeble-minded, um, there is definitely some, some tragic elements in there. Um, I know some people who are really sensitive about that kind of thing uh, cried, so um, yeah, it's really an unusual game. It's, it's different, it's something different. Um, I haven't played anything like this ever, so... Maybe that's worth um, looking into it, uh, at least um, if you're into adventures and if you're into unusual setups and storytelling. We're entering into a bit of a different gaming genre now, I guess you could call it that. Um, they're frequently called exploration games, where you get to 
basically just walk around and absorb and sometimes interact, but not always. Um, Dear Esther was one of those games that um, came first. Gone Home is also really awesome. Um, I mean, the whole atmosphere is just really enthralling and um, yeah, just when when you get to discover what, what happened and um, what kind of people uh, are living in, in places or, or um, I don't know what, what kind of persons they are. Um, it's really something different. The atmosphere is really packed with, um, I don't know, that sense of discovery. Also, landscape is really important. Like in, in Dear Esther, you have this um, island you have to kind of walk through and um, find out what the heck happened. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, in Gone Home, you enter into your home but you don't know what what your family is like obviously so you just can discover what what they tick like um from from the things they leave behind and uh the the rooms you can kind of explore okay i won't give away that much about um the things you might find there but um those are games that i really enjoyed but uh speaking of which um there's this uh really crazy kind of exploration games. Um, some team that made uh, the Stanley Parable. It's also really fun. Um, if you like Mindfucks, this is the game for you. Um, it just really toys with your expectations as a gamer. I think, I think I've posted about some of the games made by Robert Yang before. Th those also really get you there. They're really short, but uh, the Stanley Parable is a bit longer. Um, you just get to, um, I don't know, listen to this um, narrator voice that tells you what, what will happen next and you can just plain out refuse and say, no, I'm, I don't want to do that. I'll do something else. And then the narrator will start yelling at you and tell you what? No, I didn't tell you. No, don't do that. Oh, please. Oh, go, go, go do what I told you. Please do. And um, it's really fun to just kind of find out your limits. You die frequently. Um, <laughs> they made another game uh, that's called... I really have to look to the screen right now because I cannot remember. It's terribly long. Dr. Langeskov, the tiger, and the terribly cursed emerald, a whirlwind haste. <laughs> That's what it's called. Um, it's uh, free, so um, it, it's short, it's like 15 minutes. Um, but if you're thinking about whether you're buying the Stanley Parable, um, check this game out. It really gets you sort of into the uh, mode they employ. So, let me know what you think about the games if you get to try them. Uh, I hope I can help with prioritizing a bit what's next on your list. If you have a list, like I do, you probably do. Um, take care. Bye.